Hey guys, and welcome back to Luigi's Mansion 2 Dark Moon. It's time for Mission 3, The Graveyard Shift, which is a kind of a pun in that one, yes, we will be visiting an actual graveyard, and two, the definition of graveyard shift, and you can find Google for this, is a work shift that runs through the early morning hours, typically covering the period between midnight and 8am. Ah, yes, it's slightly terrifying time of, of day in any sort of workplace. Yeah, it's just because your mind runs free at that point in time, because uh, it's night time, you expect to be sleeping, and uh, you're forcing your brain to stay awake. Yeah, also, I mean, there's, like, games like, is it Friday Night at Freddy's or whatever, that's slightly terrifying, and that's, like, all the way through the night, and you've got animatronic things trying to kill you. Also, Luigi's Mansion 2, which takes place mostly at night, and the first one, which took place within the space of a single night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know quite how long Luigi's Mansion 2 takes in terms of stuff because it doesn't really show Luigi sleeping. So I would assume this is also in the place of one night, but it's much less obvious and it doesn't really get covered. I don't think it's really important, honestly. You're just going about having a charming, whimsical time, warring plants, rescuing toads, collecting treasure. Does time matter? Uh, no, you're trapped in an infinite loop and you are never allowed to sleep. But isn't that surely, like, almost every Pokemon game ever? Sort of. I mean, you, there are beds, but you're not really allowed to use them. I don't know, you could have naps in Pokemon, that's how you restore health, like in Silphco and the like. They didn't even bother with the key this time, they just locked it up with vines. Weird thing about this cutscene, if you enter before the vines all completely disappear, I find that there's like sound desync. It wouldn't surprise me because I think it, it's, it's got a lot of books this game does, so that sort of thing would make sense, I think. Well, Luigi's Mansion 2 is like, I would say one of the 3DS games that pushes the system almost to its limits, I would say the one that pushes it to its absolute limits is Smash Bros 3DS, because you can't even use the internet channel and the like when that thing's in use. At least until the new 3DS comes out. Will you be getting that? No. Unless there's a game that I really want. Uh, at, at the minute, I have very little reason to make that upgrade. I can't wait until uh, Majora's Mask 3D gets announced for the new 3DS and everyone grumbles but eventually buys it anyway because Majora's Mask is the tightest shit. <laughs> I say, I, one thing that I'm very interested to find out is what the apparent rumour is about two Wii U remakes that are coming out next year. There's a rumour that that's happening. And I think me and a friend were kind of discussing it and kind of thinking about it. There's only really two big games that we could feasibly see them doing, which is like a Super Mario Galaxy HD bundle and like Twilight Princess. Because a lot of the other games are either too niche or they've already got a representative or things like that. So it's going to be interesting to see what those are. If it happens that Majora's Mask is actually one of those, then I think the internet will absolutely flip its lid. Yeah, yeah. You could say Majora's Mask is a bit of a niche game, but it has a hardcore following. I mean, considering the absolute kind of constant stuff that's happening every E3 for like the past couple of years, people want Majora's Mask 3D slash Wii U. They're desperate. Now uh, you've definitely got to put the pipes back together, otherwise you won't be able to water this plant, and you won't be able to kill the Venus flytrap who was just sitting there being a Venus flytrap, and you won't be able to get the emerald. Congrats you murderer, you have treasure. It's for treasure, you monster. I gotta say, I kinda miss getting rubies, sapphires and whatnot in the same place. I get that they did it to make each mansion kinda thematic, and I appreciate that. It adds a certain level of charm, but uh, I like all the treasure, and I want all the treasure. Give me all the treasure! I know, it's also a shame, like, the, pearl, the pearls have disappeared. Yeah. Because they were always quite fun. I love this cutscene. It's awesome. Remember, lefty Lucy, righty tighty. 
I did it. Ha. Yes, Louise, you did do it. Well done. <laughs> he is adorable. I fucking love Charles Martin. Eh? Even if he is cuckoo and crazy in the insane brain. <laughs> I love it even more later on in this very mission. There's just, it's... I think I almost let out an audible squee at one point. Ooh, we're inside the uh, the tree now. Things are starting to get a little bit spooky. Hmm. Has it? It very much reminds me of like the Deku tree. Yes, actually. Yeah. Uh... Can't even go up a flight of stairs in this game about there being a ruddy ghost. They're just everywhere. It's, it's like there's some sort of weird epidemic happening of ghosts. I'm longing for the, the mission where we just get to stomp on Goombas and I once again venture back into comfortable Mario territory. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. As long as it's Goomba Ghosts, I'm fine. Yeah, that's right. I'm a fan of Mario 64. How do you like that reference to the endless staircase? I have to say, I'm kind of... I'm a weird gamer in the sense of... Like, I've hardly played... 2D Mario up until kind of I think my first one was New Super Mario Bros. U, or it might have been the original on like the 3DS Ambassador program thing. Uh huh. But otherwise, I haven't played 2D Mario at all. I'm solely 3D. Okay. But I like 3D Mario is more than 2D. I just find them easier to control, really. Oh god, yeah. Hello. Also, did you think we were gonna get to the center of this problem, like <laughs> <laughs> in the third mission? Remember what I said? I think last time or the part before. Something like that. You gotta pace yourself, man. <sighs> Let's <-a> go. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, typical that we have to go to a crypt. Can't we just go to a park or something? Luigi finds a special crypt key in Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> Fun thing about that sh shot there, it's basically a complete replica of what they did in Vertigo with the camera shot. Uh-huh. That, that's, that's where that comes from. Well, that's one way to get down, I guess. I don't know why he didn't decide to take the stairs, because, I mean, you know, the he'd gotten rid of the ghosts. Would have been slightly easier. That way's quicker, and also going back to uh, the Deku Tree, that's what you had to do. Go to the top. Uh, of the uh, main room and jump down, break through the cobwebs to reach the bottom level. Once again, a little bit of a uh, depth perception issues there. Couldn't find the flame. Couldn't get purchased, as it were. It's a lot of spiders. It's a lot of gold as well, mate. You might not be able to see it here, because it is a very dark area, but we just picked up a bucket. We're going to need to fill this with water, and we're going to need to water a plant to get our next precious gem. There's a lot of gardening in this game, isn't there? Mostly in this mission. Especially in Haunted Towers, and again, it's thematically appropriate, because everyone loves plants in this place, or did, when they were still alive. After they passed on, I guess plants became the least of their concerns. Well, I mean, also, then they, you know, kind of got possessed. So that, that doesn't help matters. I know this is a really obvious thing. Like, yeah, you've got to keep, like, a lit cobweb ball out of the water by uh, holding the torch up. But it's just those little touches that make the game that much more engaging. It is also slightly easier said than done, because the gyroscope controls, when it comes to the vacuum and the flashlight, are a little bit weird. I just use the X button, really. Yeah, I think... I, I don't know, I never really got on well with the buttons in that respect. X Gamer Richie, not a fan of buttons. <laughs> not a fan of motion controls either. In fact, fuck video games. Why am I even on this playthrough? Don't like motion co controls? I think I'm probably one of the few people who does actually like Skyward Sword. So, <laughs> that argument doesn't work. Well... <laughs> <laughs> I, I think if you pull that other thing, you get, like, accosted by spiders or something, don't quote me on that, it's been a long time since I was tricked that badly. <laughs> that was a really obvious one, are you even trying Nintendo, or next level games I should say, it's not always Nintendo's fault. What are you talking about, it's always Nintendo's fault, they have like, complete input on every single game they make, and don't let anybody decide anything. And where the fuck is my Crash Bandicoot game, get on it Iwata. <laughs> Well, I have to say, I think some of the things that Nintendo are doing right now, even though they are slightly messing up with certain things, like, 
their partnerships with people are amazing. It's like the reason that there is a Star Fox costume in Bayonetta 2 is because Nintendo sent that to Platinum Games and said, do it. Yeah. And I've seen what one of the Easter eggs is. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Oh, I wish there was a Star Fox game on that level. Well, hopefully we'll get a Platinum Games Star Fox at some point. <sighs> hopefully. Hopefully. Hikami is doing stuff and he's, he's, he's teasing people on Twitter. Well, that's what, that's what he always does. He always does it, but I don't know. There's something. Mm -hmm. Enough about Kamiya for now. We've got booze to uh, hunt down. Indeed we do. Alright, let's see what Pony's going to offer up this time. Haha. <laughs> yeah, a slow clap, that's what that one deserves. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's sort of slightly weird. I don't know why they decided to go for Beluga as the thing to to pun off of. Because you can make a boo sound out of it, mate. That, that, that was the selection process for the names of the boos in this game. Very true. Well, there's something slightly interesting I found out. Was the... kind of the Luga part of the Luga may be a slight sense of origin for Lugia in Pokemon because it's a white whale with a sort of similar body shape and coloration to Lugia. So there may be a slight link there, but probably not. Oh, it's Toad. They're so adorable in this game and they squeak when they walk, which I think is a reference to the old cartoon. Don't quote me on that. I have no idea, but it's like the most adorable thing ever. Yes, they're there. They're there. Ciao. Come on. Ah, you found my slave labor. I mean, my workforce. <laughs> ah, fuck it, they're slaves. They work for practically nothing and they don't complain. Well, I mean, there's so many of them that kind of, they're like Yoshis in that sense. They just get abused by people. Like, Mario punches Yoshi in the back of the head in Mario World when he wants Yoshi to extend his tongue. I think Yoshi should join a union or some shit. Also, Peach somehow magically keeps Toad under her dress to re to reflect attacks. Oh, he's carrying Toad with the poor August. It gets even better and even cuter. He holds the door open for them. The perfect gentleman, the Toad. <laughs> Speaking of those, those topiaries kind of remind me of Princess Peach. A bit uncanny. I'm not quite seeing the peaches. I think it's because it's a bowl cut more than anything. Here we have an actual mini boss. These are the three sisters, and uh, they're quite tricky if you don't know the strategy to them, which will be explained shortly. Oh god, I, I recall absolutely hating them. I struggled so much. Hope you haven't forgotten about me, big boy. Luigi never gets on well with graveyards. Just nothing good ever happens there for him. I can't actually think the last graveyard he was in, because I don't re just really remember there being one in... Oh no, there was one in the original Luigi's Mansion. It's where you fought the, the glob thing. Yes, the second boss, mate. Um, Bogmire, I think it yes, was? That's yes, that's it. Anyway, first things first, just get Toad out of the way, because he's running around and he might run into the path of your polar ghost. But the trick to this boss is, the three sisters are extremely vain, so just wait until one of them drops their mirrors, and then go to town. I'd recommend starting with the smallest one first, because she has the least HP. And make sure to use the dodge button, or you will get mullered in this fight, and pretty quickly to boot. It's slightly frustrating, because it's basically a waiting game if you want to kind of get a good hit in, but... yeah. The Portagus upgrades help immensely here as well, otherwise the fight can go on for quite a while. There's also ravens that fly hither and thither, which can uh, pep you and take a bit of HP, which is always annoying. As much as I love Toad, so annoying during these fights because literally you're just hearing oh 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 boom <laughs> boom oh oh it's just like no stop it toad you, you can be adorable but only when i want you to be adorable 
Wow, the elder sister is not putting up much of a fight here. I know that you've pretty much done her as you would to get a gold in the first game. Well, that was the middle sister. I was talking about the big plump one, shall we say, to keep it PC. I mean, she's dead, but you, you still got to be polite. But uh, the elder sister has the most HP, as you would expect. There's really no danger to the fight now. It just takes a while. Yeah. It's it's slightly weird, really. It's like... They probably could have made a fight a bit harder. In general. This is like... I would say one of the closest instances you'll get in the entire game to a portrait go, so enjoy it while it lasts. I think it may actually be one of the only ones, because I don't really recall any other ghosts like the Three Sisters anywhere. Oh. Hello. Huh. Okay, so I guess they were someone when, when they were alive. Well, everybody was someone when they were alive. I mean... Come on. <laughs> right, I, I don't have a response to that pedantic reply. <laughs> it starts to get a little bit creepy when you realise, yes, these people were real, because uh, the ghosts in the first game were created by Van Gogh. Uh, someone actually clued me in, put me straight on the lore of the first game. Like, the portrait ghosts were real. The mansion was fake. The ghosts were fake created by Van Gogh. It's kind of weird to uh, fight a golden greenie and not have the ghost and cat theme playing in the background. Yeah, I've, I've noticed sort of in this part there have been a number of instances where the audio just freaks out a little bit. It's like it, it cut out during the three sisters fight rather randomly and stuff. Well, at least Toad's enjoying himself. Well, I mean, it's largely because there's, there's no ghosts around just yet. Well, there's other obstacles you have to kind of carry Toad through, including water, ice, ice cream. He doesn't like chocolate. He's kind of lactose intolerant in that regard. So he's basically like Ellie in The Last of Us, except more adorable. Yeah, much cuter, I'd say. <laughs> well, he doesn't look like Alan Page, so that's a plus. Bye-bye. And there we go. Mission complete. Whoops. Don't know why we couldn't go through there as well, but uh, I guess we'll take the pixel shifter. Well, they want us to have the level clear screen, so we have to go through the proper pixel shifter. Also, I, th I assume because there would be the possibility that the prototype pixel shifter might not work properly. Oh, God. Like, get... A combination Luigi and Toad. Load. <laughs> Tuigi. <laughs> that's two Luigi's. Uh, well, that'd be slightly terrifying, I think. I'm surprised I got gold on that, because I took a lot of damage. It's only 25. It's not that much. It's a lot of damage, Richie. I don't think you understand how my mind works when it comes to the recording process. <laughs> it gets worse in later missions, though. Much worse. Well, it's because it gets harder. You'd, you'd, yeah. probably, you'd probably kill me for some of the uh, damage stuff I take in some of the video games. That I just, I'm just like, eh, it's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm trying, but I am struggling. <laughs> Actually, that, that's a point. He told us the key would be inside the crypt, but we found the toad instead. I feel robbed. Oh, did... Egas just a dick. Is that what you meant by busy work? Go find this thing. Oh, it turns out the thing isn't there. Pretty much. It, it's all busy work. Tantalizingly close. We should have that upgrade by the end of this mansion. the hell is ghost tea? I have no idea, but I, I think Egad may have a slight crush on the Three Sisters. Oh, you know, he's a, a, a silver-haired Lufaro. Pretty much. 
<laughs> Sorry to give you that mental image. Also, also, ghosty PG tips. Paranormal ghostly tips. Thank you. <laughs> also Yorkshire tea, because no ghost can resist the smell and taste of a good cup of Yorkshire tea. You're also forgetting tetanus, that's always a good cup of... Of course, of course. Well guys, we shall see you next time for the fourth mission of Haunted Towers. See you then.